and we are now live. Okay. So welcome to the IPFS weekly meeting. And uh, today the first presentation is by Jim Pick. Jim Pick, would you like to start? Um, sure. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Um, so I'm going to share, share my screen here. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Oh. No. Can't. Okay. Please begin. I'm sorry. Is it good? Okay. Um, okay. Share the screen. Um, what is it? Turn this on. Okay. Um, hopefully, everybody can see that. Um, so, this is going to be a very quick. Um, demo what I'm working on so far. Um, we we have a um, service that's been deployed previously called PeerPad. It's at peerpad.net. And um, it's a showcase for um, the um, work we're doing in building collaborative apps that um, are real time and mutable. Um, but we want the want this these apps to work. Um, in a decentralized manner, and they'll work with IPFS. So, um, but I, th this app, uh, if I start a new Markdown pad here, um, it's a collaborative app, and you can people can type here, and, th and then you can um, share the URL with other people, and everybody can type on the same same document together, um, and. Where the this has been built on top of a library called um, PeerStar app. I think that's Shipyard PeerStar app, which is on GitHub. It's all open source, and um, it's it's a it's a bunch of layers. So um, so PeerPad is built on top of PeerStar app, and PeerStar app is built on a collection of what they call CRDT conflict. Conflict free replicated data types, uh, which uh, Pedro uh, Tejera, <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying his name right, um, he's uh, built a library uh, of different, um, I think I should have a link. Uh, um, shipyard slash JS Delta CRDTs. And this describes um, what they are. But they're basically a bunch of data structures that many people can write to and work on at the same time, and it'll merge things together. So you have things like um, lists, um, single registers, maps, sets, and you can combine them together and build applications with them. And so PeerPad is, is an example of the sort of application you can build with it. Um, this, this particular app has a lot of um, uh, features to it. And in order to just focus on one small aspect of it, I built a small version of it called PeerPad Nano, where I stripped off all the features except for the text editor. So I, I just have this deployed on my own personal domain, and it's running off the, com the computer I'm talking on right now. So my demos, I'm going to start it. and. Um, so this is a simple peer pad document. I can just type here. But what I've done uh, in order for me to be able to see what's going on underneath, underneath the covers, um, a lot of the complexity is um, when I start this document, um, it, it uses a number of IPFS mechanisms, such as uh, PubSub to find other other nodes. It also, uh, there's a custom piece of software called a WebSockets, a um, libp2p WebSocket star. And um, so th that's actually running on my computer as well. The plan is to make that go away and have IPFS, have that built into IPFS itself with a rendezvous service, but that doesn't exist yet. So that ha there has to be this one small centralized rendezvous service that runs. So I've created a simple document here. I'm going to use a different web browser here, uh, um, Firefox, and load it up. And it takes a, a moment for it to, to um, find the other one. But you can see up here, these, these, these 
represent each web browser, which is a separate peer. And I've just taken the long peer ID and just taken the last three characters. And this is, the, this is called a vector clock here. So I've typed 44 characters here, basically. So if I go here and I type a few more, you can see, see it sinks across. I've been working on some performance things. Initially, when I started working on this, there were some bugs in the, uh, the connection management and got rid of those. So it's, it's running a lot faster now. Now, the, um, the latest thing we're trying to hook in is uh, something we call pinners. So right now, these, this isn't talking to IPFS, um, the DHT at all. Like it's not storing this data in IPFS. Um, these are just connected to each other over WebSockets, and it's using the CRDTs the libraries to synchronize. So what we want to do is have this saved into IPFS as we're, as we're typing. Uh, because the problem is like if I if both of these web pages go offline, the document's not there anymore. And if I'm collaborating with somebody's in a different time zone, you know, I might not be online at the same time as them. We want these to persist. So um, um, Dirk Dirk McCormick has done some work on building a persister um, feature into Peerstar app. It's, it currently exists as a pull request. And uh, I, I hooked it into a service called the Pinner, so I'm just going to run that right now. And it's just, it's a Node.js program. And you can see there's a, a third collaborator just uh, connected this um, peer ID as uh, ZBE. And so that's all connected in there now. So um, if I start typing, you can see as I type in IN5 here, the vector clock increases. And little documents are getting saved as I type. And um, it, it does um, deltas, which are just basically individual characters being typed, and they're just saving those in individually. Then every once in a while, it's configurable. Uh, it'll save a full snapshot. The neat thing is I can take these, um, these uh, content IDs, and I can pluck, plunk them into IPFS, uh, IPLD Explorer. You can click on it, and uh, you can just see like it. There, the objects themselves are. You can't really see what they are because they're just a, a binary blob. But you can see this one. I can see it's a delta. I can see the, the it links to the previous delta, which is this one. And you can see right here. This was JBW, and that was that one. So so it's pretty neat because you can just uh, type so. So the idea is I'll be able to deploy these pinners in the cloud. And even if I shut down the pinner, um, when I start the pinner up again, it will just look into IPFS, grab the latest data, and it'll, it'll make that available to anybody else that joins the collaboration. So um, that's about all I have to show on this right now. So, um, does anybody have any questions? No, but it's awesome. <laughs> Super neat. So I think the plan is uh, we're going to do some um, automated testing and try to do some scalability testing, simulate like 100 people collaborating at one time, hopefully. But like we, we actually want to be able to um, take the fold this into the production site here and um, use this for um, collaboration within protocol labs itself and we can sort of dog food it and test it out so so hopefully in a couple of weeks I don't know I don't know how long it's going to take but um, we'll have something sort of stable Portia your audio is muted Thank you very much, Jim. Um, does anyone have a question before we move on? Um, okay, I don't see any hands, so let's continue. And the next presentation is by, I believe, uh, David Dahl. He's going to show us the IPFS um, proof. 
Hello, can you hear me okay? Yes. Great, great. Well, uh, hi, I've been playing with something for a while and uh, it's just fascinated by IPFS and I, one day I decided to think about how could I build sort of what Keybase is built, just the social proof part of Keybase, just using IPFS. So let me share my screen. Um, here it is. And so it's, uh, it's all on GitHub here at uh, IBM, IPFS Social Proof. This is a side project I'm working on. Um, so when you log into, well, you don't log in, but you, you pull this up uh, locally. There's just a node server running, of course, and uh, it gives you your identity, which is, of course, just your uh, um, public-private key, key pair. And uh, you can give yourself a handle, and then you've got your, your uh, public key. And uh, I'm using blockies for avatars and um, you can find out who your peers are and you can go ahead and look at your peers by examining the public key and for instance uh, I've looked at myself it's looked at the proof that I've published here on a gist uh, I only support gists right now I'm gonna hopefully support any kind of web resource uh, DNS record etc uh, again modeling this after keybase and uh, so here's, uh, you know, I've got a, a proof here and I'm currently just building in the sort of real time remote fetching of these proofs and validation. Right now the peers kind of just collect them and, um, you know, pass them to each other via broadcasts on the pub sub. But uh, the, the ideal position would be where just like Keybase here, uh, real time uh, validating them when you join the network. So anyway, that's kind of what this looks like now. There's a little log in here. Um, you can create a proof pretty easily or look at your existing proofs and add the URL for where you're storing it. Um, it also stores it in IPFS, of course. And um, uh, creating is really simple. You can just username and service and it generates a proof. And then of course, uh, I, I sort of building this just sort of uh, as this experiment, you know, try to try to build that key base experience uh, for validating people. Um, but also, I think this might be a good jumping off point to be able to build other applications on top of this. And, and it just supports, you know, some really basic uh, just user identity, you know, from the from the uh, from the get go. So anyway, that's kind of what I've been working on. And uh, Thank you for all your hard work. I'm really enjoying working with uh, with IPFS. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, great. Um, any questions for David? Um, uh, question. Um, so, for the proofs, do do if I'm building an application, do I have to trust your proof service? No, the whole idea, I think, behind what Keybase did, which is really cool, is people can put their proofs on Reddit, on GitHub, and they can publish them places where uh, an existing authentication mechanism is required. So um, when you pull up my um, profile or look at examine my public key, you're going to get URLs for where I've published my proofs. Now, you can click, at the, click on them and examine them manually uh, just as a you know, double check. But um, this system will, I've just got a PR in recently that will just pull them down and validate them for you. Of course, just it's a signature over the, you know, the statement and, uh, you know, where it's published. So hopefully it's trustless, like uh, all good systems. Uh, so another, another question. Um, how uh, how do you find other users? Like, how can you do search? So um, there's nothing like that implemented, and that's, of course, something that we want to uh, build into this. I'm actually working with someone from Origin Protocol as well. Uh, the Origin team is, is helping me. We're, uh, side note, we're, we're rebuilding the UI in uh, the Chu framework, so it's very lightweight and tiny. Um, but in the meantime, yeah, there's no search for... For users, there's basically a broadcast that happens on PubSub, and there's local PouchDBs. So um, I'm imagining, you know, either storing like people you discover in some extra table that 
you can kind of you know run through at some point in the future to remind yourself who you ran into on your peer network. Um, but also, I was thinking of playing with uh, OrbitDB to collect, you know, sort of like who's on the network and and that kind of thing. And then, of course, the one of the things I'm really excited about is I want to build it so that you, as a user, you generate new channels uh, based on topics like Reddit or something. And so you have these subs that people can subscribe to and and perhaps even use CRDTs to to build like Reddit on top of this as well. And do you have a do you have any thoughts about uh, getting around using this to help get around the issues with certificate authorities? Because right? Keybase is the big thing is that you're getting authenticated with all these websites, but all of the websites all rely on CAs to make sure everything checks out. Yeah, that's that's an excellent question. That is sort of that is the ten million dollar question. Um, I I don't know. I haven't thought too much about that yet. Um, I think it's funny too, because I know that Keybase is, they're booting up off of the idea that, well, at some point there'll be something. And I'm imagining an integration with Filecoin to, um, you know, use the consensus of, of, of a chain to establish your identity, like in a more formal manner. Um, but for now, I'm just having so much fun just dealing with IPFS that I'm, I'm not even thinking about blockchains right now yet either. So maybe to my, to my chagrin, I should be looking into other things as well. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other hands? All right then, um, thank you very much, David. Um, before we end, does anyone have any announcements before we log off? Going once, going twice. I guess okay. it's a, a brief oh. thing. I, uh, I'm, I'm trying to uh, collect some people to talk about uh, sharing in IPFS uh, and putting together some utilities to make sharing easier, which may include uh, things like the, uh, the identity management thing we, we just saw. Um, so if, uh, if you are interested, um, give me a ping. Do you, I mean, do you mean sharing files, sharing in the most general sense? Yeah, just utilities, right? That will help you move around your move around your keys to the right people and ping people to let them know that there has been a file shared with you, right? I am interested um, in that. Just, just this is David. I was going to say I'm also very interested in that and have a lot of ideas. So uh, I don't know. I'll try to find you via uh, GitHub. Where where sh where should we go, Eden? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, I'm just gonna throw a thing in this in the uh, so in we the IRC have, channel now, and we'll okay. figure it out from there. With that, we, yeah. we have a nascent uh, repository for share.ipfs.io, which is an app that wants to be the good demonstration of sharing via IPFS. So it might might be wise to do it there. Okay, uh, I will add that to the chat. Would this this would not include like actual identity, like attempting to do you know authentication and private data on the network, or this is just related to sharing? I, I want to collect information. Identity is a really hard problem. Uh, sure. Likely, whatever sharing you do, you're going to want to plug various identity things into it, which will change over time. Okay. Um, but yeah, right now I'm just trying to collect the people and, and take it from there. Okay. Request okay. to review the meetings that are upcoming. Yep. Um, so before I do that, I'm actually going to put in uh, David's social proof um, proof of concept. Give me a moment. So here's a. GitHub repo for that. And in terms of meetings, future meetings, I have a spreadsheet here. We already have um, one person signed up for next Monday. So if you're planning something, um, I have a spreadsheet for next week and a week after that gives you more than a week 
to prepare and to put down what you would like to present during the IPFS monthly meeting. Um, awesome. So that's it from me. Like, I don't have any other announcements. Um, do I see any hands? No? Awesome. Great. Thank you, everyone. And uh, I'll see you next week. I think Bye. There, there, was a, there was a hand. Oh, uh, no. Yeah. I didn't see the hand. Uh, there will be a GoIPFS release this week. Uh, there's currently an RC that will hopefully uh, hit this uh, later on today. Uh, okay. So people should test that. Coolness. Thanks. Any other hands? Nope. All right. Um, I'll see everyone next week. Have a good Monday. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.